This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol, and men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Radio control cannot contact our scientific headquarters on Jupiter, Colonel Rayburn. Why not? Jupiter is on the other side of the sun, and our calls are being bounced off the transmitter on the asteroid palace. But the radio officer thinks the transmitter is broken. Send someone to look at it. Galosphere 347 is nearest to the asteroid. Tell them to change course and investigate. Very well, Colonel. <laughs> Headquarters calling Galosphere 347. Over. Captain Larry Dart here. Inspect the sonar beam transmitter on the asteroid palace. Over and out. Well, for a woman, she doesn't talk much. Venusian women never talk much, I am glad to say. Husky, change course 10 degrees. Yes, Captain. The asteroids are my scanner viewer now. Switch to primary drive, Slim. We must slow down and go into orbit. <laughs> Take any equipment with us? No. Let's inspect the transmitter first. Jupiter isn't receiving any signals. The sonar beam bowl is broken. Watch out, Husky. I forgot there isn't much gravity on an asteroid. What do you think caused the damage, Captain? A meteorite. There are pieces of it lying around. So there are. You know most about radio, Husky. Take a look at the bowl and see if we can fix it. back to the Gallosphere while I call Rayburn. Mm, this is too big a job for us to mend. Ah, another piece of meteorite. What a pretty color. We've found the trouble, Colonel. The transmitter was hit by a meteorite. Can you fix it? Husky's just come in. I'll find out. It's too big a job for us. You'll have to send a space maintenance engineer, Colonel. All right. There's no need for you to wait. You may return to Earth. Thanks. We're on our way. Speed, 5,000 miles an hour, rising. Space velocity maintained. It's time to go into the freezer. Let me have a snack first. I'm hungry. You're always hungry. What are you holding, a cake? <laughs> no, Captain. It's a piece of meteorite. That might have been the piece that did the damage. It doesn't look big enough. And it isn't very hard. If I squeeze, it is... Oh! What's the matter? I cut my finger. Well, throw the pieces away and get yourself that snack you were talking about. I'm not hungry. You are joking. No, I don't want to eat. All right, I'll switch on the time control. Gallosphere 347 calling central control. We're going into the freezer. I'm setting automatic time control to operate for eight days. If an emergency arises, we will use our Zergon ray to switch off your time control. Well, 
here I am with me bird song translating machine and no bird to put in it. Uh, which reminds me, I wonder how that Martian parrot of Huskies is getting on. It was great fun teaching him how to speak English. <laughs> I'll ask Husky to bring him here for me to see him. A robot control? Yes, Professor. Uh, would you get me the Space Patrol restroom? To whom do you wish to speak? Husky. Uh, he's with Galasphere 347. Galasphere 347 is just approaching to land. Please call the restroom in a few moments. <laughs> It's certainly good to be back on Earth again. If we're not on standby duty, I'm going to the country for some fishing. I would like to visit Paris. I have never been there before. Will you come with me, Husky? I don't want to go anywhere. Husky just wants to stay here and eat. No, I don't. I just want to go to bed. I feel... What's the matter? I feel ill. My head is going round. I must have... Picked up a virus somewhere. You better go to contamination control. I'll get the doctor to have a look at you. Ah, there is the gabla dictum parrot. I cannot comprehend you. I thought Professor Haggerty had taught you how to speak English. Be quiet, Gabler. There. He mightn't want to talk English, but he certainly understands it. I thought he could talk. But he's probably waiting for Husky to arrive. Sorry, Gabler. Husky won't be here today. He's ill and he's in hospital. But I'm sure he'll be out soon. Uh, I've been here for nearly a week, and I still don't feel well. Call it station in Ward 8. How are you today? Terrible. Would you like some orange juice? No, thank you. Is there anything else you wish? I'd like a nurse to come and sit with me. I'm lonely. Very well. I will be over at once. I don't want you. Then I will call again in an hour to see how you are. Huh. Who'd want a robot to come and hold their hand? All I'd like is a pretty nurse. What do you mean Husky's ill? He is in the United Galactic Hospital. And none of the doctors can find out what is wrong with him. Is he in pain? No, Colonel. He is shrinking. He's what? His body is getting smaller. Tell Dart to come and see me. At once. He is at the hospital with Husky. I will inform him. You'll soon be better, Husky. Don't worry. I can't help worrying. My face is all right, but my body is getting smaller. Soon I will be looking like a Venusian. Will Captain Larry Dart please report to Colonel Rayburn? I suppose that means you'll be going on a space patrol without me. I'm sure you'll be well enough to come with us on the next trip. How is Husky? Just the same. Come on, I've got to go and see Rayburn. I will come with you in the monobile and then wait in the restroom. Husky always used to enjoy riding in these. From the tone of your voice, it sounds as though you think he won't be doing it again. I'm afraid that's what I do think. If the doctors can't stop him from shrinking, he'll soon disappear. I have never heard of such an illness. It's impossible. Nothing's impossible. This isn't some Earth germ he's got. It's a space virus. Ah, uh, we're just coming to space headquarters. Ah, uh, Dart, I want to talk to you about Husky. When did you first notice he was shrinking? When we got back to Earth. That must be Professor Hackety. 
I asked him to examine Husky and see if he could find out anything. Well, now, I've looked at Husky, and I'm sure he's shrinking his cord by a piece of meteorite which jabbed his finger. There must have been something in it, and if we... Analyze the meteorite at once. I can't. The Galosphere was decontaminated when it returned to Earth, and all the bits of rock were destroyed. This is terrible. I'm coming over to see you. Come with me, Dart. A shrinking disease. Mmm, bejeebers. There's nothing like this that's ever been heard of. Ah, Colonel. I'm glad you brought Captain Dart. There's something I'd like to ask him. Well, what is it, Professor? I can't understand why Husky didn't start to shrink until he arrived back on Earth. Was he all right in the Galosphere? Perfectly. As soon as we left the asteroid, we went into the freezer uh, and... The freezer, of course! Being in the freezer stopped him shrinking. What's the cure, Professor? There isn't one. Do you mean Husky will keep shrinking until he disappears? Don't worry, Captain. We'll put him in a freezer cubicle. Then he won't shrink anymore. Husky's been in the freezer three weeks, and still no one can find a cure. At least he's alive. Being in the freezer is hardly living, Captain. I know. I'd give anything just to hear him say he was hungry again. I knew I'd find you both here. We come every day, Colonel. You can't do Husky any good. The best thing for you is to go on a mission, so I'm sending you to Jupiter. The scientists want to send me some rock specimens. But, Colonel, I... Don't butt me. I'm as upset about Husky as you are. But a space patrolman must put his duty before his personal feelings. Yes, sir. I've allocated another Martian to your crew. Prepare for immediate takeoff. Has Captain Dart left for Jupiter yet? Yes, Colonel Rayburn. He took off a few moments ago. Galosphere 347, calling Earth. Central control, receiving you. I'm setting automatic time control for 21 days. If an emergency arises, we will use the Zergon ray to switch you off. Still no cure for Husky. What a tragedy. He might have to remain in the freezer forever. <laughs> Controls off, Captain. Everything's in order. I've never been on Jupiter before. What is it like? A bit like the Everglades, covered with Newfoundland fog. I'll go to the scientific HQ and collect the rocks. One of you can come with me if you like. Even with the molang, the atmosphere gives me pulmonary congestion. I don't know what Slim means, but I agree with him. I'll stay inside, too. I'll be back as soon as I can. Open the vacuum door, Slim. You've forgotten your electron, Captain. So I have. I've never used one of those electronic translators. How do they work? On a system of microdots, all worked out by the decoding computer. There, it switched on to J for Jupiter. Now I can talk to the Jovian. Galosphere 347 has landed. I sent Joe to bring Captain Dart here. Good. Joe's a first-rate guide. He can make his way through the swamps better than a loomy. Talking of loomies, they're barking a lot tonight. It's the mating season. Someone's coming. I'll open the door. You'd better get the specimens ready. Space patrolmen hate to be kept waiting. Ah, Captain Dart. Glad to see you. Hello, Dr. Smith. Come in and close the door. Is it all right if Joe comes in? I haven't seen him since my last trip here. Certainly. Come in, Joe. It's all right, Joe. I've switched on my Electran. I hope you stay long time. You, my favorite Earthman. <laughs> You're Joe's idol. I think he goes for beards. Are there many rocks for me to take back to Earth? Only these. What was that? Probably the air conditioning plant. 
Make yourself at home. We'll soon be having dinner. Not for me, thanks. I know the food you boys eat out here. Pills and vitamin injections. We have special pills for guests. Pink ones with blue stripes. Where is big man with spike hair? You mean husky. He's ill. Joe, sorry. Joe, very sorry. I'd be glad when my tour of duty is over. I'd give anything to watch a 3D program on television. That reminds me, Joe. I brought you a picture book. How kind of you. Most kind of you. Where's the anti-snake serum? Quickly, I'll get it. Serum no good for snake bites? Yes, it is, Joe. Now, don't worry. You'll be better in a minute. No, no. Only loomy pebbles good for snake bite. Looks as if he's right. The serum doesn't seem to be helping. Where can I find these pebbles, Joe? In swamp, where loomis live. I'll get some. I'll be as quick as I can. <laughs> Don't shoot, Captain. Slim, what are you doing here? I spoke to Dr. Smith on the radio, and he told me what had happened. I came to assist you. Good. You can help me find the Loomis. We must try the swamp. There they are. Looks as though they're playing water polo. I've got to have one of those white things. Let's see if there are any lying around. There are none here. If we can't find any, Joe will die. It's no use, Captain. There isn't a pebble to be seen. I'll wade into the swamp and take the one the Loomis are playing with. Come back. Jovian water is poisonous. Nice boys. Good boys. Come back, Captain. You will never catch them. You're right. We better look somewhere else. There is nowhere else to look. Loomy pebbles are only found where Loomis play. I'll hate to tell Joe we can't help him. I know how you feel. If I... Captain! What? The Loomis put a pebble at your feet. He wants to play with me. Don't take it from him. He might bite. I'll attract his attention and you get hold of the pebble and run. Nice boy. Good boy. <laughs> I'll follow in a minute. Good boy. What am I supposed to do with this? Does Joe have to sit on it or eat it? He wants to eat it. I'll crush it into a powder. Sorry we took so long, Joe. Never mind. I will soon be better. I've crushed the pebble and mixed it with some water. I cannot believe this is a cure for snake bite. I'm much better. Much better. Oh, what a relief. I was afraid you'd die before I got back. Jovian snake bite not kill. Only make me grow down, down, down. What do you mean, grow down? Smaller and smaller. I soon small enough to make dinner for Jovian insects. Captain, do you... I do. Come on, Slim. We're going back to Earth. A most extraordinary story, Captain. I brought back what was left of the powder. I'll give it to Husky. I don't see what a Jovian snake bite's got to do with a meteorite. Millions of years ago, that meteorite might have been a planet. Perhaps there were snakes on the planet, and when they died, their poison disappeared into the rocks. Then, when the planet exploded, the pieces went hurtling off into space, and some of them landed on the asteroid. And Husky picked up one of the pieces. It's a good story, Professor. You're not an Irishman for nothing. All I hope is that this powder won't kill Husky. A Jovian body isn't like a Martian's. It's our only chance. Very well. 
Give him the injection. I feel as though I've been asleep for years. You've been in the freezer cubicle, but now I want to give you an injection. Will it make me better? I hope so, but of course there's a risk. What sort of risk? It might, uh, it might... Uh, Come on, Professor. I've never known an Irishman to be short of words. I'm not short of words. It's just that uh, uh, this injection might make you um, <clears throat> shrink more quickly. What happens if I don't have it? You'll have to stay in the freezer forever. It is no good to spend the rest of my life like that. Come on, give me the injection. Very well. How long will it take to work? Uh, about one minute. Start counting now. Uh, I'm too scared. Where's Dot? Outside in the corridor. I wonder what is happening to Husky. Haggerty's coming. We can ask him. I've just given Husky the injection, but we won't know if it's worked for another 30 seconds. And if it doesn't work? Uh, he'll get smaller and smaller until he finally disappears. And it'll be 30 seconds till we know. I've never known time go so slowly. Neither have I. I wonder if I did the right thing. It was a risk you had to take, Professor. To remain in a freezer forever is unthinkable. Time is up. Go and see him. You go first. All right. Uh, how do you feel? Much better, thank you. Has the injection worked? I'll be able to tell in a moment. Hmm? Ah, yes. Yes! Yes, everything is perfect. Will I stop shrinking? Certainly, and you'll start to grow back to your normal size right away. <laughs> By tomorrow, you should be perfectly well. Ah, Dart, uh, how do you think your friend looks? Fine. But how do you feel? Hungry enough to eat a Martian ox. <laughs> now I know you're better. And just to help you recover more quickly, how would you like somebody to keep you company? Sounds wonderful. Who will you send, Mala or Professor Haggerty's daughter? Someone who loves you very much. Come on in and see your friend.